Hey there, this is Pete Townsend from Norio Ventures, and welcome to Money Never Sleeps, a podcast that looks inside the head of entrepreneurs and at the crossover of startups, enterprise, finance, technology, and life as we know it. This week, we talk to Gene Ryan from the Venture Business Network, a dynamic community of business owners and leaders who share their knowledge and connections to support one another in the development of more successful businesses. We've been talking a lot about how the shift to mostly virtual or virtual-only interaction with customers and investors has impacted entrepreneurs in the last few months, and how everyone is adapting. So we're thrilled to connect with Gene to dive right into how important it is to keep your wider network engaged as well on this week's episode of Money Never Sleeps. Money Never Sleeps, pal. Here we go again. Welcome to Money Never Sleeps. We're recording today from the home studio. We're on with Gene Evans from the Venture Business Network, a business and referral network here in Ireland. With that, welcome to the show, Gene. Thank you very much. Pleasure. I was really looking forward to talking to you about the Venture Network, Gene, and about things in general. Um, and it's really good timing now with all the kids back in school and everyone having a bit more time to expand their business networks, right? Uh, but with an added twist that it's all online or most of it now. And how are we actually doing this, right? Which is something that we covered quite a bit in the last probably 20 episodes and whether it be just talking to different entrepreneurs that we're dealing with the move online and how they were talking to customers and investors, or it was about the overall just context of the psychology of it and what's behind all that. So um, just it, it become a very commonplace part of our day to day. And regardless of whether you're kind of a, a high growth tech startup that's growing globally, um, or you're do just doing business locally, it, it can be difficult to navigate. Anyway, kind of just digging right in, want to hear about you first and kind of how you got to this point. So can you just tell us a bit about yourself, your backstory and what you're doing right now? Yeah. The backstory really, I suppose, starts in 1998. Um, I graduated from UCD with a very useful degree in linguistics and Italian. And I had done Erasmus in Italy and met a boy. So as soon as I had graduated, I moved on over to Italy and I lived in Turin. So I had lived in Turin for about a year and a half. And But I had also become part of a program within IBEC called the European Orientation Program. And while I was living in Turin, I was teaching English. And then I got a placement within Bordeaux, which is or what was the Irish Tourist Board at that point. Um, so I went up to do an apprenticeship uh, for one year as a travel advisor up there. And so I suppose that was the start of a journey for me, um, particularly I suppose one momentous milestone in my life was that started in the office and they said answer the phone and I was going I can't answer the phone I know I've got a degree in Italian but I read everything in English I can't do this and they just said answer the phone you'll learn and I went okay so when you need to answer the phone and you need to eat you learn your language pretty quickly so I did and I ended up doing um, all of my work through Italian at the time through business Italian and when my year was up I was asked to extend and then a job came up as trade rep, so dealing with all of the tour operators um, between Italy and Ireland and Northern Ireland. And within our base in Milan, I had moved up to Milan at this point, uh, we also covered Greece, Malta and Cyprus, that whole Mediterranean basin. So I got travel an awful lot, with, which was fantastic. And I met an awful lot of people. And I loved it, doing loads of trade shows. Um, so after a number of years, off I went to New York and I did business tourism for the States. So that was great. So predominantly incentive travel, bringing and sort of talking to all of the operators and agencies in, in the US and traveling around. Um, after a year, decided to move back to Ireland and I ran the convention bureau mm -hmm. for five years. And um, so I had all my operations team, my job was bring in the business and, you know, so conferences going into either hotels or the RDS or the CCD or what have you. And um, I built up a network. I had a very, very strong network within the industry. And I used to, I just loved talking to people and I loved finding out their story and about that. And part of that is that sort of Irish part of me just being, it's not being nosy, it's just inquisitive. Irish people like people 
And I think that was just a natural thing and it's something that I noticed was the differentiator when I'd be out and about at meetings and management meetings. And, and I just loved it. And then 2017, I was pregnant with my third. That was a difficult pregnancy and I was signed off work and then went on to mat leave. And while I was on mat leave, my team was disbanded. Okay. And um, so that was, the writing was on the wall. Obviously, they couldn't tell me. But that was, you know, when I finished my mat leave, then my maternity leave, I just said, right, just tell me what I already know. And um, so I was made redundant. Um, so my other half has uh, his own company. And he said, well, why don't you come yeah. work with me? I went, okay, this could be amazing or an unmitigated disaster, but time will tell. And so my background would very much be sales, marketing, and, and management. So while I had a strong network, I was going, it's a very niche network. And I went, Phew, it's not very diverse. And I also don't know anybody who wants a printer. And I don't really know any local businesses. So the first thing I did was join the South Dublin Chamber. And there was a couple of networking groups that I got involved in. When I look back at it, it literally was where I'm going to go and do a few of these things. I'm going to see where I'm getting business, what's working. And then I'll call yep. and I'll break down what this is the one that's going to get me business. And then after about a year, I was going, oh, that's not the way it works okay. at all. At all. Threw that idea out of the, out of the water. And... Brian had been a part of Venture and he, I started subbing for him. And then after a while, he said, well, why don't you just take over that place? Um, because you're doing a lot of networking and you're much better at connecting people than I am. So I'm OK. Um, and that group at the time was, I was their gender balance. Yeah. So it was all men and me. So I sort of go in going, hello, I'm your gender balance yeah. for the day. So that side of things never fazed me. An observation and a realization for me in the networking was so what people don't necessarily see, especially if I'm up, uh, if I'm up, I'm seeing something or I'm facilitating something or I'm managing a network and I'm chairing it, whether, whether it's online or in person, what people don't see or know is that I'm also incredibly shy and I'm an absolute and utter introvert. So while I love my networking and I love connecting people, um, I also need to go away and then just be on my yeah. own. We, we we had a guy in the you show know? way back, Dan Ramamamorthy, um, and his you know stage name is I Am Dan Ram. He said the same thing. Events were his life. That's all he did. And MC yeah. hosting, compare it, whatever you want to call it. And he said that he needed to go away and spend some time on his own playing the guitar. And that's how he recharged, right? Was just yeah. doing his own yeah. thing and getting his yeah. time alone. That's that really interesting contact. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, I have to say COVID has been a real big eye opener because uh, from that perspective, because you know, before I would have given out about being in traffic on the M50 or the amount of time you're traveling to meetings or this or that, whatever. And then I've realized now, I thought if I was in that situation again, I would not give out about it. I would use my time differently. I sort of, I'm a late comer to podcasts in one sense, but I started listening to a lot of podcasts. Um, and using the time wisely um, just to learn different things and keep up to date but just the time being able to think and being in my own head because what I've had for the last eight months is constant mm. noise because of the kids and all of us trapped in the house and constant noise and constant hissy fits and constant just this rotation of young kids and then you know there were there were two six and eight when they started so then potty training so you're going to have to come with me while I bring Yeah, you and, and that, that unforgiving <laughs> mute button that may or may not be on or off. Who knows? Oh, the things, the things that I went through. Oh, my Lord. Back to the, the, the observations. I think the confidence in women, that is a huge factor in networking, why it's really, really important. And I think I've heard so many women who I think are absolutely awesome. And they go, I'm ready. They, they've sort of got comfortable with the idea of networking. They've built up a comfort factor in standing up, having all eyes on them. They are the center of attention for whatever that 60 seconds. They've had to fine tune that pitch and go, crap, that was a bad one. It needs to get better. I'm going to think about how I'm going to do that better or convey my message or people aren't understanding what I do. I need to get better at conveying that and going through that process, but in a safe environment where it's non-judgmental, where people just get it and it's a safe environment. And then I've heard women that say, I'm ready to graduate to gender neutral networking. And it was quite an eye opener for me. And partly, you know, and when, when I say about the shyness and the introvert, like my job beforehand, I'd get up in front of an auditorium in front of a thousand, two thousand people mm -hmm. and deliver a speech or a pitch or do anything like that. Not a problem. 
that wasn't a problem because what people don't understand is that's not about you. You're just a vehicle to deliver a message that is pre-scheduled, pre-ordained, written out or whatever. And it's about a deliverability. But when you are networking, it's about you. Yep. It's you, and you are now vulnerable because it is about you. It's all eyes on you. What are you saying? What are you trying to get across? Did you make it or did you not make it? And that vulnerability. And another, you know, I suppose another thing that when you're working with a big corporate, you speak their speak, yep. it's their lingo, it's their messaging. You're indoctrinated. This is the company speak. This is how you speak. It's how you portray. It's how you refer. It's how you convey a message. You get out there on your own both as somebody who's starting a business or running a business or even a seasoned business owner or you're just moving out of the corporate world into startup mode. Now, who are you? Yeah. You don't have a big machine behind you anymore. Who are you? What does your voice sound like? And that ability, one, to find your voice, to hone your craft, to hone your message, to have that confidence um, is something that takes practice. So like, I, what I would say to my kids is, Everything is easy when you know how, but nothing is easy when you don't. And networking is really hard for people because nobody teaches them and nobody says, this is how you do it and here's how you can do it better. And all I know is that I have watched and watched and because I've done so much of it. And that's where I'm looking back and going, okay, I can do something Mm -hmm. about this to help people. Therein, I suppose, part of the conversation happened. um, So Shea Cattle set up venture about 14 years ago or so um and when i started a conversation with them there was four groups so he was setting up another one on a tuesday and then i set up last year i set up a group in bray um at 10 o'clock on a friday and then this february i set up another group so we only had a few meetings before the world imploded and uh, we all went online so that, um, yeah, so that was sort of where, where my involvement okay. in venture okay. came. Set up a, a venture, a venture talk. So it's got, we've got our own podcast as well. That, that was the whole plan. In February is like, okay, let's open groups every couple of months, go away the Southwest, um, maybe Kilkenny into Wicklow, whatever, you know, expand it out. And the idea of them being into Northern Ireland and internationalize it. So there's a lot of other networks. There's the BNI, which would be the biggest mm-hmm. network in the world. Um, and it's got so it's colossal. It's got like nine thousand four hundred chapters in the world and growing like it's huge. Um, but it's B two B and B two C, and where venture differentiates itself is it's just B two B, just B two B. So it's um, so it does cut off cut out an awful lot of people. But it's interesting talking to business people who either want to talk to other business people or find referral partners sure. or strategic alliance within a business um, within a business framework. So it's a different level of uh, conversation and it tends to be people who know about networking and who want to network and want to be there as opposed to some other networks where people are sometimes told mm-hmm. to be there. And when you're told to be there, when it starts. Yeah, not- what I always say to people is just be yourself, right? But when you're in a environment where you're representing your firm professionally, right? That's not about being yourself. That's about being your firm, right? So it's yeah. hard to kind of exactly. shift gears and go back and forth. And I've been on the back foot sometimes, even myself, where it's been, you know, um, you're in a setting, you're in a situation, someone asks you what you do, you go into elevator pitch mode and they step back, right? And they're like, oh, I kind of just wanted to hear about you personally. I didn't, it's like, okay. Yeah. It's just learning these little things. So with Venture Business Network, are you running this now? Yeah, so I, I sort of take it on a management role of it because what has happened since March, not only did we move everything online and we did that very quickly and we reacted very quickly, but after a number of months, I think, you know, there was the, the people were tired of COVID, they're frustrated, they're also zoomed totally. out. And then I read this article and it was around the Zoom fatigue and how tiring. It is because you're constantly on screen and the, the, the levels of concentration you need are completely totally. different than when you're totally. in the fire. Yeah. I, I mean, we was talking to someone the other day who said that this unending chain of half hour meetings is just completely wearing him down and that it was yeah. what used to be five minutes after a board meeting in or any meeting in the hallway where you would just get something done yeah. is now replaced yeah. with a half hour Zoom, right? Or yeah. what just happened yeah. in the you know over the water cooler now needs to be well I've got to reach out to this person separately and have a half hour Zoom, 
right? And there's just yeah. so much of that. Just kind of yeah. shifting gears a bit, Gene, pre-COVID, you go to one of these early morning meetings, you've switched yourself on, you are, uh, you know, in the 10, 15, 20 minutes with coffee before a speaker gets up and, and shares some insights. You move around the room, you look at a few name tags, or you just, you know, open up chats with people, right? And you've got, you get a few conversations going. Yeah. If you just go once, odds are you're probably not going to get too much out of that. But if you go repeatedly, you see some of the same people, you talk about what you're working on, you're going to get something interesting. And then I think the rule of thumb is one out of every 10 business cards will actually get you a piece of business, right? Or, you know, something like that. Okay. So when you're in a face-to-face -face environment, going and having that coffee and the banter and the chat is a hugely important part of it. Um, and I'm actually writing a blog about, I started writing a blog about the neglectful networker today. And that was part of one of my things that people who literally turn up with a bang when it mm -hmm. comes to start, you know, in terms of meeting or arrive late, they miss that bit. And the bit they're missing of the coffee, the banter, and the going, hey, is the gold. That's where you're building up your relationship. The rest is structure. You're listening to what they do, how they do it, why they're doing it. But the other bit is where Big you're building your relationship. And you won't get business if you're not building the relationship. And pe there's a lot of pe people who will go through and they'll go to a meeting, they'll hand out loads of business cards like that, and they expect the business no. one. They're not going, oh. a business relationship takes as long to build as a personal relationship. And this is what people don't understand. And again, it's going, you didn't meet your wife and go, you're it, let's do this. Let's go, job and three babies, yep. done. It didn't happen like that. I'm sure there was a courting period, you dated, you got to know one another, and then you decided, right, we're sick of the beaches in Bermuda, there we're going to head off um, to sunny Dublin. Exactly. You know, there was a journey. It didn't just happen. But yet people have these unrealistic expectations going, if I go to a few of these meetings or I've gone for six months, I haven't gotten any business. And I'm going, well, what have you done to deserve the business? You know, for me, there, there's an element of networking that helps businesses social proof themselves because people can buy, they can testify, they can vouch. But if you're buying something or you're trying to engage a new supplier, you want to know they're trustworthy. You want to know that they're going to turn up on time, that they've got good references or depending on, you know, is it capital outlay, is it just a small purchase? You'll have different criteria for how you're going to evaluate people. So picture this, you've got somebody who's in a network. You've got the person who shows up every week, is consistent, is reliable. When they do the presentation, they put thought and effort and energy into it. They are teaching you something new about the business. They're teaching you what's new. They're using it as product launch. They're um, talking about their team, how the business is growing. They're energetic about it. And they turn up early. They do their one-to-ones. -one. They're engaged. They're invested. They're interested. And that's a really big thing. They're interested. They're not just, you know, when there's the social media stuff and um, what are they doing to support? They're liking the post, they're sharing, they're following, they're engaging, they're listening to who wants an introduction, the type of company somebody wants an introduction to versus the person who comes every few weeks, they're late, they don't do their one-to-one, they don't actually engage. Which of the two would yeah, you want to Yeah, that's to a good support? point. And, and so much of this is subliminal and people sort of say, and it's like people sort of saying, I'm not going to come online while it's like this. I'll only come back on this face to face and going, you're only as good as your last network. If you do not keep your business top of mind, why should anybody remember you? But if you are engaged and you are making it interesting and you're making an effort, people will want to support you. They will want to see you succeed. Um, so I had like Brian had a problem in his business there. And I remember somebody who had done a 60 second pitch um, three years ago. And I remember exactly where he was sitting in a room. And he was just something that he said about how he had helped one of his clients. And Brian had a particular problem last week. And I said, you need to talk to Michael. I know he knows how to, to do this because he did it in a 60 second pitch. Now he does, is never going to remember, but I have a good memory, which helps. And I have a little mental Rolodex. Every time I meet people, I do a little mental Rolodex of, what I'm remembering about them. So I know when to pick and I know how to match people. But I suppose within my my journey then as well in the last couple of years, but I'm way more confident now because of what I was saying earlier, I have to find my own voice and I have to trust it. And my network is so much more diverse. I meet amazing people. And what I've realized, one of my core skills, and it took me a long time 
I'm I'm a very good connector because I'm really good at listening to people and listening to what they don't say as well as what yep. they do say. So, you know, because it's always about a match in a meaningful, authentic And match. how did you move that all online six months ago? <laughs> So we, um, so one of our members, um, so a shout out to Dermot from Digitech. He is a member of a couple of our groups within Venture and he has a, uh, the agency for LogMeIn. So they do go to meeting and they go to, re- uh, go to meeting, um, webinars and, um, online meetings. So he organized us with all of the licenses and we got that set up. So a few of the things, I suppose, like, some, some people just aren't as engaged with it, whereas like, for me, the network is you have to keep yourself top of mind. I think there was a paralysis when COVID hit as well for a lot of businesses because people were going, oh, my God, like everything has to stop. I don't know whether my business is going to survive. So one of the things I started was I did what I called advice clinic. So I think there, there's a combination of things happening now where the meetings are still going to happen online. Well, people can do their one-to-one if they choose to do them online or face-to-face. And I think that is helping as well. Well, as of today, then I've just been reading a few uh, hotels posting out that as of today, the hotels are allowed to host Mm -hmm. smaller meetings. So I think that's going to help. So I think even in the next couple of weeks, we're going to see another change and another evolution of of where things are at. But I think people are Okay, so I mean, you're, 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 you know, it sounds like you have a a degree of confidence there that, that, you know, you'd be able to get these physical meetings back going again. Yeah, in some of them, I think with in some of the locations, I suppose it's a combination of things. Like it'll all be about social distancing. So, in some of the locations, we won't be able to do that um, because mm-hmm. it just won't be the room. So we may change locations. But in some of the hotels, I'm hoping that we will be able to go um, uh, in a, into a face to face environment again. But we've also um, tested doing a hybrid solution. So we've already done the test on um, if people don't want to come into a physical environment. I think there's a lot of people who do. Um, but for people who don't want to, we have a solution ready. I think that would okay. be positive. And, and one thing just uh, that, that um, I was aware of as well that, that you guys are doing and the way you talk about it on your website is that being able to build out that board of advisors for your business that you ordinarily wouldn't yeah. be able to really pay for, right? Um, and developing these relationships with people who just are naturally helpful. Um, How do you do that? Well, it it comes down to the whole word diversity. And this was a big thing for me. Um, If you, a lot of people who start out of business, they start out because they have a core expertise in an area, uh, whatever that area is. But let's say um, somebody starts a business in um, social media marketing. They're not experts in law, in the finance, in tax, in HR, in all of these other aspects or on, you know, everything that it takes to run a business. So the board of advisors comes in is because you've got this diverse group of people who are sitting around the table from completely different backgrounds, different education, um, different demographics normally, who just bring different perspectives and they don't know anything Mm. about your world. So their objectivity leads them to ask questions because they want to find out more. And I think that's a really powerful thing because sometimes the question, the unwitting flippant question from somebody who doesn't know any better can be as insightful because as you're not hitting, you're not getting your message across or they're not understanding it. So you need to do better. You need to dig deeper and find out how you can get your message across better. But it's also when you need to pick up the phone and you built up that relationship with and you sort of go, if I'm having a problem here on um, a legal issue and I just want to shoot the breeze here, you know, should I go this way or that way? Or tax, I need to go and get some advice. I'm not really sure what to do here. Or I, I'm now going to hire staff. I, how do I manage my payroll? All the stuff that you've never had to do before, because when you're coming from a big corporate environment, you have your job. Everything else is done by the rest of the organization. Mm-hmm. But now you are everybody and you don't have that skill set and you don't have that knowledge. So what you do is you build up trust and you learn to lean mm-hmm. on other people within your group who, as you're building up your relationship, are very happy to share and take a phone call from you or respond to an email, whatever. And then invariably people start doing business across the table, virtual or um, in, in real life. They start doing business because as businesses develop, they do need tax, accounting, payroll, marketing, legal, all the different things. So it's the diversity and 
the caliber of experience that you yeah. have on the table that lends that, that board of advisors. It's a good point. I like that. Yeah. It, it is a two-way street. And like you said a couple of minutes ago, it's a context where developing a relationship with someone that has some expertise outside of your business area, just trying to explain the business to them, really put some discipline on you to do it in such a way that, well, if someone completely outside of the industry that doesn't have a need for the product that I'm selling, if I need to be able to, you know, bring them up to speed with what I'm doing, I got to put it in language that everybody's going to understand. And that will be naturally good for yeah. your own business, right? And then coming the other way, the person who's helping you, whether it's a mentor or an advisor, they're going to get something out of it as well because they're learning something new about a part of business that they probably, or a product or a sector or vertical that they hadn't been part of before, right? So it's a good two-way yeah. street. And um, it's great to hear you facilitating that as part of the overall thing, right? Yeah. I think when I'm in a networking scenario, I want to know what people do. I would like them to know what I do, but it's not because I want to sell to them. I, I want to know how I can help them. And I can't understand how I can help them unless I can build a relationship and have mm -hmm. that conversation. And that is a two-way street. So I would say to people, you know, I, I, had a, I had a conversation with somebody a couple of weeks ago. And I just thought, you know, we got onto this exactly the topic, you know, what sort of networks he involved and what are you doing? She was, well, I did go to a woman's network thing. And there was just a, a woman who left corporate and she's now a coach and says, and it just wasn't for me. And I was, I started digging and, and investigating whatever like I do. And, and I just sort of said, you know, it's not about what she does. It's about who yep. she knows. That's what you have to find out. It's also their ability to understand how to connect you in, how to be that connector and how willing people are to open up. Yeah, their that's really important. And I was talking to someone earlier today about the other kind of venture, right? The, the venture that I live and breathe um, with the startups that I'm working with, which is venture capital and about the context of a venture capital business raising their first fund. And Faye Walsh Drew Yard, who we had on the show a few episodes ago, um, I was talking to her separately and she said, listen, raising a first time venture capital fund is really about finding that person that knows and trusts you with their money effectively, right? And that um, that first anchor investor will be someone like that. Um, and we talked about it yeah. a bit more in that that doesn't have to be someone immediately within your network it could be someone that knows and trusts you that also knows someone who knows and trusts them and exactly. it's just that one degree of separation sometimes when you get it to two to three degrees of separation that's where the link starts to weaken a bit but if you can just get to that yeah. one and you know a shout out to to colin mooney who i worked with years ago in Bermuda. he said to me when i was first thinking about this space you're never as far away from the person that you need for your business than you actually think you are, right? And whether that's a yeah. customer or an investor, and it's just through this network. And that's the best thing about Ireland is that I think the you know average degrees of separation out there in business around the world is something like 2.5, right? 2.5 people away from you. And in yeah. Ireland, it's something like 1.3, if, if not less, right? Yeah, if not less. You do. I, I, I'm a firm believer in Ireland. You just have to have a long enough conversation to find out how you're related. Exactly. I know. I know. Gene, you know, I think we're going to find out. We're going to find out pretty soon how yeah. you and I are related. Um, tell me, how do people get involved with venture? They can get in contact with me. So my email is gene at venturenetwork.ie. And what I suggest is come along to the different groups and visit the different groups and do it two or three times and the same with any network go and visit two or three times see the group see the different groups in action if they're new to networking and they're coming into it i will try and mentor them through the process so that it is positive and keep in contact with them make sure i do early one-to-ones with them for me it's a game changer networking is a game changer what people don't understand is one you have to get to know who people know you have to give it time if you're not willing to invest the time don't do it because networking is not for today networking is for tomorrow and every single business a lot of the problems are the same so you can talk to people who have been through it or you're listening and you're building up that knowledge of who other people know and you might be ready to engage them but go six months i need to dig into that particular comment and talk to that person and get that connection. But I'm not ready today, but I know it's there now and I know how to make that connection. Networking is about your future. It's about being ready for tomorrow. And a lot of people think it's about today and I'm going yeah, to make that's a, a great thing. point. And I, I know we could keep going on this gene and 
you know, get into a whole next step. What's a follow up? How do you follow up? What are some good tools and tips to track all that and make sure you are following up with people and, Mm -hmm. you know, using CRMs effectively for that kind of, I love this stuff. I love it. But given that we've, um, we've covered all the bases now at this stage, um, my final question is, even though you've shared with us so much and thank you, but what would be one thing that people wouldn't expect to know about you? Um, I think that the thing that I, I do get the most <gasps> really is that I am I I I'm very very shy, um, and I when I say that I was paralytically shy uh, up into my twenties until I started not learning to speak but just being able to talk to people without going the color of a tomato and feeling like I was going to be cracked like an egg falling on the ground. Um, because when I was younger than that, I would have literally melted into the wall and not been able to talk to anybody. So I think when people see me up in front of a room and I'm talking and I can do this, I've this the other thing that people who are shy and don't know, they think they can't. And part of what I want to say to them, you mm-hmm. absolutely can. Because if I can go from being the shyest person ever, plus introvert, plus all of that, I'm a shy introvert. And if anybody's read Susan Cain's book on the... the um, uh, quiet power which I think is an excellent read highly recommend it um, but my point there is that if I can do this Absolutely. anybody can do this yeah. well Jean thank you so much for coming out to the show sharing all your insights um, I feel this is a conversation that, that is only just beginning so thank you oh, thank you very much fantastic thanks a million that does it for this week folks and thanks to Jean for sharing your insights as Jean mentioned, you can reach out to her at Jean at VentureNetwork.ie. And more links and show notes for this episode are in MoneyNeverSleeps.ie, so check us out online. Also, you can subscribe to our Money Never Sleeps newsletter at MoneyNeverSleeps.substack.com. If you're enjoying Money Never Sleeps and want to see it continue, make sure you hop on to Apple Podcasts and give us a five-star review. As for me, I help startups get their products to market, get customers, and finance their vision. You could find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, or at NorioVentures.com. And you could follow Owen Fitzgerald on Twitter at Owen Fitzgerald9. Finally, till next time, thanks for listening. See ya. Money never sleeps.